Four American war veterans who helped to inspire the TV series Band of Brothers have been at Stansted Airport today. Stansted was an airbase during the Second World War, and the old soldiers were there to unveil a memorial. Like the real colleague, Band Jukes, of Brothers, four war heroes General at Stansted to remember Europe. fallen comrades. What has always uh, struck me about uh, the story that is told on Band of Brothers is the way in which the bond that is uh, derived as part and parcel of the suffering and the adversity that people have gone through. Thoughts turned to the thousands of young Americans based in East Anglia in the run-up to D-Day. And Stansted, an airport that now handles 21 million passengers a year, including high-level VIPs, began life as a bomber base. And it was clear wartime memories still evoke strong emotions. I was interviewed for the parachute drop that we made for Eisenhower and Churchill by both Churchill and Eisenhower. And you, you can't, you'll never know what a proud moment that was for me, for little Don Malarkey from Astoria, Oregon, being interviewed by Winston Churchill. The memorial unveiled today acknowledges Stansted's wartime origins and the veterans who performed the ceremony are now famous because of the success of the Band of Brothers TV series. It's very amazing to end up having a dad as a rock star. <laughs> That's what we affectionately call him at home, is our, our rock star. And amongst the guests, current soldiers there to pay tribute to four old heroes. Gareth George, BBC Look East. A 37-year-old woman has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder after a man was stabbed at Jaywick in Essex. The electrician, who's in his 50s, is in a serious condition. He was stabbed a number of times and was also hit by a car. Hundreds of jobs look more secure after a buyer was found for 12 co-op department and homeware stores. The shops in Essex, Suffolk and Norfolk were going to close. The Liverpool-based store chain Virgo Retail has now taken them over. Now, just when you thought there could be nothing new in hairdressing, it's time to think again. A hairdresser from Norwich has designed a new device which he believes will be sold across the world. The Spin Curl is the brainchild of Brian Coombs. For many women, perfecting the perfect curl is a great test of our patience, whether we use rollers, curling tongs or even straighteners. But a Norwich hairdresser has invented a new device which has been taken up by a global company. This design uh, comes from a plastic cup which I literally uh, made into this now um, spin curl. And after watching sort of Dragon's Den and things like this, I figured that I might as well try and get it um, patented. Um, after doing that, I went to Remington about two and a half years later, and to my surprise, my amazement, that they, uh, they said, yeah, they'd like to take it on, and now it's sort of sold worldwide. So I've just uh, dried, the, dried the hair with the, uh, the spin curl attachment, um, and as you can see, you get these ringlety curls here. Um, from there, we're going to just separate it out, and then you just get a nice little beachy, wavy effect from there. There are many curling tongs on the market, so what are the benefits of the spin curl? The main difference between this is that you don't have to dry your hair, then curl it, using curling tongs or straighteners. Um, you're drying your hair and curling it at the same time. Yeah. And there's even a tutorial on how to use it on YouTube. Not content with just one successful product, Brian's got plenty more up his sleeve, but he's keeping them under wraps. Dawn Gerber, BBC Look East, Norwich. Stronger power lines have been installed over a field near Ipswich after seven cows were killed yesterday when a high voltage line came down. It's not the first time broken wires have killed animals in the field. The same thing happened about 15 months, two years ago, I can't remember exactly. I was in the field, the electric cable was on the ground and suddenly it was, it was fired up, it was, you know, electricity went down it, a cow has died and this wire was snaking around and I could have been dead myself. Now, what do you do if you're about to get married and you lose not only the wedding rings but also the money to pay for the service? That's what happened to one couple from Huntingdon who turned to BBC Radio Cambridgeshire for help. 
The bride arrives for her wedding at All Saints Church, Huntingdon, but this was a service that Jane Walker at one point feared might have to be cancelled. Even as the day dawned, their lost wedding rings were still nowhere to be seen until the postman called. Through the post this morning with our wedding cards came an envelope and our two rings were in it and there was a house full of tears of joy that this morning. It was incredible. The couple had been shopping in Peterborough two days beforehand when they lost a bag containing both their rings and hundreds of pounds in cash to pay for the service. With time running out, they went on to BBC Radio Cambridgeshire and pleaded for their return, with little hope that it would work. In the event, the rings were returned, but not the cash. Whoever took the money, um, because they returned the rings, we're happy for them to keep the money. I hope it's a blessing to them. Um, they've been such a blessing to us by sending them back. Thank God for that. Uh, a, a drop of human kindness in a, in, a, in a potentially very tragic event. So, all's well, it ends well. I fell to pieces. Seriously, I was just so overjoyed. Um, I don't care about the money, it doesn't matter. But to get the rings back was just... It, it was a prayer, it was a delivered prayer. It was just incredible. And there was to be one further twist. That night, Jane found half the money they thought they'd lost was in fact at the bottom of her handbag, and the church has agreed to waive part of its fee. John Cranston, BBC Look East.